good afternoon, grade 12s. First of all, sincere apologies for that multitude of things that went wrong in the folder for Friday's lesson for the um, what was supposed to be lesson eight and just I think everything went pear-shaped in that particular folder. I do apologize. And in theory, we sorted it all out. And um, Ms. Florenza has sorted out the two videos that she would have put into that folder. They were not supposed to be the video um, of lesson seven. That was a mistake. Um, and those two videos, short video clips, that she wanted you to watch, she has now put into the folder for today. So today's lesson is on contraception. I'm going to call it lesson nine, but in fact, it goes over two days. So what is called lesson nine is your lesson for the 19th of May, that's Tuesday, and for the 20th of May, that's Wednesday. Okay, so contraception. Still part of human reproduction, but it is a separate PowerPoint. Okay, so take cognizance of this. And what I've tried to do in this PowerPoint is I've formatted the slide backgrounds, and I hope I've remembered to do this all the way through, so that female-only methods of contraception have pink backgrounds and male-only contraceptive methods have blue backgrounds, whereas methods that require um, the cooperation of both genders have a gender-neutral cream background. And general information has a lovely mint green color background. Wait. Okay. So first of all, at some stage, please read this article on this particular site. Um, and also in that, on that same site, and it's not a YouTube video, which is why we can't copy it, um, is a little video on the history of birth control. Please definitely watch that video, but also I recommend that you read the little short article. I've put this as a Word document to, in the same folder as Lesson 9 that opened today, so that you can copy and paste this URL to see the video and read the article. Oh no, this is a bit fuzzy. Okay, so the SAGs, um, you remember you should be checking the SAGs regularly to determine um, how much detail you need to know. And Contraception occurs in the section in human reproduction in two different places. Under M1, which remember is stuff that, in theory, this is the only stuff that they meant to be able to ask you on an exam. Um, M2 is practical stuff, which they will ask on in any case. In theory, in M3, you are not supposed to be examined on the work unless they ask you, they give you information and ask you questions about it. But remember, and I've told my class this a number of times, and I think I've told the other class as well, um, the current examiner has in the past, over the past two years, asked questions before that are aim three and not given enough background. So this is why I'm going to try and um, include some background on this, although attitudes and beliefs of different cultures on the use of contraceptives, contraceptives, I think that you will get some of it out of that video, but you should know some of that from general knowledge. Okay. All right. So lots of words for a contraceptive um, that have changed, in fact, over time. So prophylactic, preventative, um, preventive, condom, pull, diaphragm, anti-fertility, contraceptive device, and rubber. Okay, so um, a condom very often used to be called a rubber. Okay, so one of the things that you're going to 
have to know all the way through here or have some idea of is what is known as the effectiveness of each of the methods. And so there are two different measures of effectiveness. Um, so while most available contraceptive methods are effective, the true test of a method's effectiveness for a particular couple is, can they accommodate the potential side effects? And this sounds a bit weird at the moment, but it, it would be things like um, the contraceptive injection quite often results in the female having um, quite seriously heavy um, menstrual periods and headaches. And so is a couple prepared to put up with those. And also, and this is terribly important, if consistent and correct use of the method is compatible with the lifestyle of the particular couple. So effectiveness or effectiveness rate is the number of women per 100 using that method of contraception experiencing pregnancies during their first year of using the method. So let's say using method A, the effectiveness is 4%. That means that four women out of 100 using that method um, fell pregnant. And it's always um, referred to as the first method of the first year of using that method. Although to me, this is not the critical issue. The critical issue is how many women out of 100 fell pregnant. Then I've just referred to this. Perfect use is correct and consistent use according to specified instructions with every sex act. So not when a couple gets blotto drunk on New Year's Eve and doesn't use a condom correctly, that is not considered as perfect use, okay? Um, perfect use, correct and consistent use according to specified instructions with every sex act. Typical use, this refers to the fact that most couples do not use their contraceptive methods correctly or consistently every sex act. And this is obviously more typical of certain contraceptive methods than it is with others. Because some of them, it's less easy to mess up using them. Okay. So now, oh, this looks a bit pink, but it was meant to be a cream-colored background. So this is the rhythm method of contraception, and it requires um, cooperation from both members of a couple. So menstrual cycles have several days at the beginning that are infertile. In other words, one can consider them as being safe if using this method to determine when one would not fall pregnant. So it is pre-ovulatory infertility, followed by a period of fertility, and then several days just before the next menstruation that are infertile, so that's post-ovulatory infertility. And you don't have to know these terms. It's just explaining it to you. So the first day of bleeding is considered day one of the menstrual cycle in calculating this. So in theory, days one to seven and day 21 to the end of the cycle is considered safe period or safe days for individuals with regular 26 to 38 day cycles. And in between that, so from day eight to day 20, and that's a long time, is not considered a safe period for having sexual intercourse if a couple is trying not to fall pregnant. So remember, and it refers to this thing. It refers to the cycle you learned about in the previous um, section when we dealt with the menstrual cycle. And so this is considered the unsafe time. Okay. Um, no, unsafe is actually from here to here, definitely unsafe. And this is considered less safe. And then this is safe and this is safest. Okay. Um, 
So this would be with counting, counting the days of a cycle. There's also a way of doing it with measuring body temperature. And remember, I spoke about that when I spoke about the menstrual cycle. Not a very effective method, I have to say, the body temperature thing, because if one's in this section here, um, who's to say that you're not on this day of that section versus that day of that section? So I wouldn't go on that one. Then the other thing is um, checking uh, vaginal mucus. Um, so no mucus, no mucus during the two safe periods, and then the mucus um, becomes, I mean, what is the difference between tacky mucus and sticky mucus and slippery, stringy mucus? Anyway, we won't go into that one. Okay, rhythm method, counting the days. Okay, so on average, the rhythm method is between 80 and 87% effective at pre preventing pregnancy mostly because abstinence has to be practiced on more than just one or two days. It can take up to 10 days without sex to prevent pregnancy. And some couples can't cope with that. Okay. It's possible to um, check what is known as a safe period calculator found at various sites on the internet and help to calculate the safe time for sexual intercourse. Sorry, this is quite a a funny method of contraception. And I can only laugh at this because I must tell you that I'm a rhythm method baby. My parents were not allowed to have more children after my older brother and my older sister. And because my mom was really sick with both of them and it required hospitalization, etc. And she was told not to have any more children. And in that day and age, way back, sort of at the time of the invention of the wheel, the only method of contraception really was the rhythm method. And so, yeah, oh, here I am. Okay, so perfect use, nine, typical use, 25. I mean, that's one huge difference. Proper use of the rhythm method along with something called coitus interruptus, which is the withdrawal method or pull-out pull method, which is horrifically not a good method, is suggested as a sin-free family planning method for couples with self-control over sexuality. And when I refer to sin-free here, this is going back to cultural or religious groups which um, do not believe in the use of contraceptives to prevent pregnancy. Okay, right. So that's my feeling about the rhythm method. Okay, so remember I said to you general things, we're going to talk about um, general information, beautiful mint green background. So first of all, we're going to look at barrier methods of contraception. And these are any methods that prevent the sperm from entering the woman's uterus and block, block the passage of sperm to the ovum. Okay, so the first one we're going to deal with is we're going to deal with male contraceptive methods. Um, sorry, male condoms. Sorry, I'm trying to write something down at the same time to make sure that I don't make this lesson too long. Okay, all right. So, male condom. Thin sheath of latex, or very occasionally it's possible to get a male condom made of something that is not latex, because some people are allergic to latex. Okay, so you know there's a condom packet, there's a condom, and you can see that the condom has a little um, tip here or reservoir for semen and then a rim where it is rolled up almost like the rim of a beanie. Okay. It prevents sperm from entering the uterus to fertilize an ovum. Effectiveness, perfect use three, typical use 14. That's quite a high um, difference, a significant difference between perfect use and typical use. So how to use one correctly. Male condom should be put on when the penis is erect or hard and before it comes into contact, before the penis comes into contact with the body of the partner. Because remember in some of the lubricating fluid that a male secretes before ejaculating, um, there is in fact sperm. So 
um, yeah, you don't bring the penis near the body of the partner until a condom has been put on. So how to do this. Carefully open the foil packaging that the condom is wrapped in, taking care not to tear the condom. Don't use scissors to cut the foil packaging. Um, hold the tip of the condom between the forefinger and the thumb. So there's a little reservoir nipple thing at the top of the condom. Hold the tip of the condom between the forefinger and the thumb to make sure that it is put on correctly and that no air is trapped inside that tip. Because uh, if there is, the condom may actually split at the time of ejaculation. So place the condom over the tip of the penis, squeeze the tip of the condom, roll it down over the length of the erect penis. And if the condom will not unroll, it is probably on inside out. So start again with the new condom because there might be sperm on that particular condom. The condom should be taken off the penis only when there is no further contact with the partner's body. Used condom should be wrapped in a tissue, put in a bin, never flush down the toilet because it may block the toilet and cause environmental damage. Okay, so here we're showing you, um, hold the little tip of the reservoir between the thumb and the forefinger and roll the condom down right to the base of the actually erect penis. So make sure that the condom is on the correct way around, that the rolly uppy part is rolled um, up like the, tip, the rim of a beanie. Okay. Advantages like the male con like the female condom. Um, male condoms are the only contraceptive that protect a woman from both pregnancy and HIV infection and protect a male from HIV infection and reduce the chance of contracting sexually transmitted infections. They're easy to obtain. Disadvantages, to be effective, a condom must be used every time intercourse occurs. Um, some males do object. They say that they reduce sensation a little. This might be an advantage as it delays ejaculation. Partners do need to plan ahead to ensure that condom is available. They do occasionally break, so they're not completely safe. A new condom must be used every time intercourse occurs. Foreplay is interrupted to put on a condom, and that spoils the mood a little bit. Okay. Precautions. Condoms should not be used after their expiry date. So if you look on the pack condom packet, it's like, um, I don't know, a tin of mushrooms. It has an expiry date. And in theory, the latex um, perishes and it shouldn't be used after the expiry date. In reality, um, not 100% true, I did my master's degree on HIV education and I had I was given for my research a black plastic rubbish bag full of condoms um, and I mean they're still they're still really really strong if we do an experiment to see how strong they are um, in fact they are still really strong okay Condoms should be stored away from heat. That's also not 100% true because I kept a box of those condoms in my years when I was doing my master's on the roof of my classroom when I taught at Red Hill and they stayed there in the sun for a whole year and they still, when we experimented on them, were just as strong. But don't you try that. I would hate to tell you some bad advice. Then they also have to have a pocket of air in the package. So if you take this packet before opening it and feel it, you should be able to feel the air in that actual packet. And then condoms mustn't be used with an oil-based lubricant such as Vaseline baby oil or hand creams. And when we get back to school, please remind me to show you why. Okay, remember, pink background, female condom, uh, female contraceptive. So female condom. It's a disposable sheath made of polyurethane. 
And the fact that it is made of polyurethane means that people who are allergic to latex are not disadvantaged here because then they can use this thing. It has two rings. So there you can see it's quite a big structure. It has an outer flexible ring and an inner more flexible ring. This is a loose ring inside it. And if you remind me when you get back to school, I'll show you these things. It lines the vagina with the inner ring covering the opening to the uterus, in other words, the cervix, because it sits over the cervix and the outer ring lies outside the body of the female, prevents sperm from entering the uterus to fertilize an ovum. And I'll show you a picture, Nana, of how it sits in, in the vagina. Effectiveness, perfect use 5, typical use 21. Advantages, protection against pregnancy, HIV infection, and other STIs. Available without prescription, stronger than latex male condoms. Can be used with oil-based lubricants. And it doesn't necessarily involve interruption of foreplay to insert. So it can be inserted in advance, unlike a male condom which has to be put on an erect penis. Because the outer ring sits on the outside, one of the disadvantages is it is visible. Now, you're sort of going, huh, what is she talking about? What I mean is in a case where a relationship is such that a female should not be using contraceptives. So she's trying to use a female condom um, because she doesn't want the male to know that she's actually using contraceptives. Now, the problem is that the female condom is visible to a male who's about to insert a penis into her vagina. Okay, they are expensive, although you can now sometimes get them in bathrooms with free contraceptives. Um, I think that they look like they're difficult to insert, especially without practice. People have to practice beforehand to learn how to do this. However, I have been assured that they're really, really easy to use. Okay, so let's discuss using it. So a female condom can be inserted at any time before sex, but must always be inserted before the penis touches the genital area. So step one, check expiry date. Um, check that there's a little pouch of air, and then open the package by tearing along one edge. Is usually a notch, which makes it easier to open. Okay, all right. Then carefully remove the female condom from the packaging, taking care not to tear it. All right, now this is important. Squeeze the inner ring. So the inner ring is inside. Squeeze the inner ring. Um, the one person that, I, that recommends these things said uh, to me, fold it in a figure of eight. But most of the pictures just show you squeezing it holding the soft inner ring between the forefinger and the middle finger and thumb. Use the other hand to separate the folds of skin, in other words, the labia around the vagina, and put the squeezed ring into the vagina. Insert the middle finger, so have a look at this picture here. Insert the middle finger or the index finger or both into the open end of the condom until the inner ring can be felt and push the condom as far up the vagina as possible with the outer ring lying against the outside of the vagina. So now look, this is showing you the female condom in position. The inner ring um, surrounds the cervix, the whole structure lines the vagina and the outer ring is on the outside and that's terribly, terribly important. Okay. All right, so the outer ring should rest closely on the outside of the vagina at all times during sex. If it gets pushed into the vagina, stop and put it back into the right place. Not sure how you one would know that, but anyway, so be it. It is important to make sure that the penis goes into the condom, taking care that the penis does not go between the condom and the wall of the vagina. Immediately after sex, slightly twist and pull the end of the condom to remove it, taking care not to spill any sperm into the vagina. Wrap it in tissue, throw it away in the bin, not inside the toilet. In fact, it's possible to keep it in the vagina for um, 
a period after sexual intercourse. It doesn't necessarily have to happen immediately, but should not um, be pushed into the vagina during any messing around after that. Okay, so we've spoken about that. There you can see the pushing it into the vagina. There you can see the correct position of the inner ring um, around the cervix. Okay, all right. So now we're still on barrier methods of contraception. We're still on female ones, and we're busy with the third method of a barrier method of contraception. And this is two different things that are similar but work in the same way. Um, I'll talk about that. They're called the cervical cap or the diaphragm. So the SAG stipulates you need to know about the diaphragm. Um, this is a really quite old fashioned but relatively effective method of contraception, not readily available in South Africa as far as I know. Okay, cervical cap is a little bit smaller than the diaphragm, and we'll talk about that. So what is it? It's a soft rubber cup with a firm rim, and it fits over the cervix, and I'll show you a picture to show you what happens. It comes in different sizes, and so a healthcare provider has to um, prescribe it to ensure a proper sizing. All right, so it blocks the entrance of the, um, to, the, to the cervix um, so that sperm can't reach the ovum. So if you have a look at this, I hope this diagram makes sense to you. So this is the vagina, okay, and there's the cervix. So one end of it actually hooks over the top part of the cervix and the other end hooks over through the wall of the vagina. So it doesn't actually hook onto the bladder because obviously the bladder, there's a wall of the vagina between the bladder and, and the vagina. And it hooks onto the bottom end of the bladder through the wall of the vagina. I hope that makes sense. All right, it should be used together with a spermicide. So a spermicide is a jelly or a foam substance that is normally available in a tube and it obviously kills sperm because if pesticide kills pests, a spermicide kills sperm. And so before inserting the diaphragm, and look, this diaphragm is huge, eh? Um, a little squeeze of spermicide should be put on the rim to destroy any sperm. Um, that do manage to slip past the rim. However, this being said, spermicides haven't been available in South Africa for at least the last decade, which makes the use of a diaphragm or a cervical cap in South Africa impossible. Okay, so it should be inserted at least 30 minutes before intercourse so that a suction develops between um, the diaphragm or cervical cap and the uterus. And it should remain inside um, the vagina for at least six hours after intercourse, but can remain in position for up to 48 hours and provide protection from pregnancy, no matter how many times intercourse occurs. And this is quite a bonus. How everyone can't get these things anymore. Okay, perfect use eight, typical use 20, advantages, no major health concerns. And this is a real bonus, can't be used, uh, may be used without a partner's knowledge. And you must remember in a society such as the one of South Africa, where there is so much um, sexual violence against women, um, that would be a huge bonus, which a male and female condom, certainly a male condom, but a female condom, not so much, although I do know of people who use a female condom um, to protect themselves if they think that there's a possibility of them being raped. Okay, no major health concerns may be used without partner's knowledge. Disadvantages may lead to an increased risk of urinary tract infections in women and not effective, obviously, in protecting against STIs, which are male and female condoms are. Okay, so we finished barrier methods, and we're going on to hormonal methods of contraception. So these work by releasing hormones into the woman's body, and these hormones 
request ovulation. Okay, so you should be able to tie that up with your knowledge of FSH and LH and progesterone and estrogen, etc. All right, so this is the more, uh, this is the first kind of pill that was developed, a combined oral contraceptive pill. Um, it's a combination of artificial estrogen and progesterone, and artificial progesterone is called progestin or progestogen. And these prevent pregnancy by stopping the ovaries from releasing ova. Um, okay. They also thicken the cervical mucus, and that makes it a little bit difficult for the sperm to enter the uterus. Um, these two things mean the same thing. I'm not sure why I put twice. It also thought to thin the endometrium a little bit so that there's less chance of fertilized egg implanting in the uterus and being able to grow. And it does this by keeping the body hormone levels artificially constant. So how is it taken? How is it used? One pill taken per day at approximately the same time for maximum effectiveness. So it shouldn't be taken in the morning one day and the evening the next day. Then what you will see if you look at the packaging in this um, in the actual picture is there's a sequence of pills and it tells you the date that mentions the date, the day of the week, and it uses an arrow to show the sequence in which the pills must be taken. And they must be taken in the sequence given in the package as different pills contain different quantities of the various hormones. Perfect use, less than one, typical use, five. Okay. Advantages may decrease menstrual pain. So for females who get period pains, what a bonus. Regular, predictable menstrual cycle. So a female will know according to what um, day she is on the packet when she's going to start menstruating. They're very effective. They generally result in decreased menstrual flow. So for a female who has very heavy periods, it is a bonus. And obviously there's no interruption of foreplay to be able to use this. And it doesn't spoil the mood. Disadvantages, possible side effects, which are often alleviated by switching to a different type of pill, such as headaches, increased chances of having a yeast infection in the vagina, possible breast tenderness, and this used to be a problem, but it appears that the manufacturers have solved this problem. Increased chances of circulatory problems, in other words, blood clots and things like that, in women who smoke. So increased chances of like a thrombosis or a stroke or a heart attack. Precautions. The pill's effectiveness can be affected by the following. And this is so, so, so important. Being taken concurrently with certain antibiotics and things like anti-malaria tablets. Very important, especially if a person, if a female is having, um, being provided with contraceptives by, say, a clinic, and then goes to a GP for antibiotics, and the GP doesn't know the woman is on contraceptives and provides antibiotics, then those two, um, the antibiotics um, work against the effectiveness of the pill, and a female can fall pregnant. Okay, if a female has diarrhea, if a female vomits, or if a female forgets and misses a pull, it is a problem. Okay, more modern pull, less side effects, the mini pull, and this is the progestogen only pull. So only progestogen, not estrogen as well, and it prevents the ovaries from releasing an egg also thickens the mucus secretion of the cervix, making it difficult for a sperm to pass through. Must be taken at the same time every day. Perfect use, less than one. Typical use, five. Fewer side effects than with combined pulls, which is an advantage, but there are some side effects, such as headaches, nausea, ovarian cysts that are possible. 
has to be taken around the same time every day, far more so than the combined oral contraceptive pill, because it has a low dose of only a single hormone. And so if it's not taken at the same time every day, it's possible for the hormone levels in the blood to decrease. Okay. Not quite as effective as the combined pill. Okay. All right. Now, you don't have to know this one, but this is quite a modern method of contraception. And so font is in blue, just to tell you that you don't have to know this, but I think that you need to know about it for your own interest sake because you live in this generation. So this is the hormonal implant. And it's a thin, flexible plastic implant about the size of a cardboard matchstick. And it contains progestin. And it is inserted, now this is a female's arm. Um, a doctor or a nurse inserts the implant. So they use an applicator, they put it under the skin of the upper arm, um, and it releases progestin to stop the female from getting pregnant. And it can prevent pregnancy for up to five years. It's referred to by some website as a get it and forget it birth control, but don't say that in a test or exam. So look here on this drawing, you can see it being, it's being inserted there. It apparently causes a little bumpy thing. Um, nice, it can be removed if necessary. So how does it work? Same way as a pull, it prevents ovulation, thickens cervical mucus, preventing sperm from reaching and fusing with an ovum. And it has not been proven yet, but it is thought to prevent implantation if a female does fall pregnant. So here you can see the applicator, it's just inserted under the skin of the upper arm. No long-term studies have been done yet because it's such a new method of contraception. It's thought to be about 99.9% .9 effective for up to three years. Advantages can be removed if necessary. Pregnancy can happen any time after removal. And this is in contrast to some of the methods that I've still got to discuss. Can be used while breastfeeding. Um, that doesn't affect the baby. No medicine to take daily. And gives continuous, long-lasting birth control without sterilization. Disadvantages. May interfere with menstrual cycles. Irregular bleeding or having a longer, heavier period than normal. And there might be other side effects, such as ovarian cysts, acne, a change in appetite, and depression. But obviously, then it can just be removed. And then it can't reduce the risk of sexually transmitted infections. Okay. This one you have to know about. It's referred to as the injection. There are a number of different makes, but con uh, the commonly used one is Depo-Provera. Okay. So it's an injection of progestogen with some makes every six months, with other makes if, um, once every three months. And it prevents ovulation, it interferes with overleaving the ovaries, causes a thickening of the cervical mucus, which prevents a sperm from entering the uterus. Effectiveness, one, perfect use and typical use. What are the advantages? No interruption between foreplay play and intercourse, no inconvenience of remembering to take a pull, elimination of monthly periods after extended use, a female may stop menstruating, it may give some protection against cancer of the uterus, and it can be used while breastfeeding immediately after delivery, so after a woman has given birth and is breastfeeding, um, it is one of the methods that can be used immediately. What are the disadvantages? Side effects such as abdominal pain, acne, depression, and headaches. And the problem is that if a female has had this injection and starts side effects, it, nothing can be done until the hormone is actually um, worn off. Um, so that just means that if it was a six month one, sorry for you, for six months, abdominal pain, acne, depression, and headaches is a reality. And then it is thought to take up to nine to 10 months to fall pregnant after stopping taking injections. 
Some prescribed medicines adversely affect the effectiveness of this contraceptive, and obviously it's not effective against STIs. All right, so that is the end of hormonal methods. So now we're getting on to a group of methods that I'm just going to call other. You don't have to call them anything in the test or exam, um, unless I say to you, give me three methods that are not barrier methods. Then you would refer, say, to these or to hormonal methods. So the first category is intrauterine devices, not inter. Intra means within, and they're often referred to as IUDs. So what is an IUD? It's a tiny device that is put into the uterus to prevent pregnancy. It is, it is used long term, but it is reversible and it's one of the most effective birth control methods available. And there are many different sizes and shapes of IUDs. So if you look at the, this picture, these show you many of the different kinds of IUDs. Weirdo, they're not like earrings. Okay, so an IUD is inserted into the uterus by a doctor using an applicator thing. It's held in position by the cervix, and once it is in, it can't be felt. However, there's a fine nylon thread attached to the IUD. Let's go back and show you. So here you can see on this picture, there's a little nylon thread attached to them. Okay. And this thread comes up through it. it when the IUD is in place, that thread always lies out through the vagina into the top end of, um, sorry, through the cervix, out through into the top end of the vagina. And therefore, it's possible to check if the IUD is still in position because it is possible for the IUD to fall out. Um, it's unlikely that it has happened in the past. And by checking that those little threads are there, one can check that the IUD is still in, in position. All right, so two different categories of IUDs. Copper IUDs, or non-hormonal, and then an example is Paragard, or hormonal IUDs, and an example is a Mirena. So both copper IUDs and hormonal IUDs prevent pregnancy by changing the way sperm cells move so that they can't get to an egg. And if a sperm cell can't make it to an egg, pregnancy can't happen. So first of all, we're going to talk about the non-hormonal copper IUDs. They don't contain hormones, but they're wrapped in tiny little pieces of copper and they protect from pregnancy for, and it says up to 12 years, but in fact, um, you'll see in the slides that come after this, they recommend, I think it's five years. But anyway, look at the picture. You can see it's a little T-shaped structure, and it has copper there, there, and there. And there's the little nylon thread. And you can work out a, um, a size here. It shows you how tiny, tiny it is. And sperm responds negatively to copper, so copper IUDs make it almost impossible for sperm to reach an egg. So it prevents fertilization. Perfect use three, typically use three, because really it's one and the same here, because one doesn't have to remember to take anything. So advantages, no interruption of foreplay, no taking of a daily pull, effective for up to 10 years before needing replacement. Disadvantages may cause menstrual disturbances may cause acne strange possible perforation of the uterus in other words might poke a hole in the wall of the uterus which sounds horrific and obviously there's no protection against sexually transmitted infections all right second kind of iud is hormonal so no copper um they slowly release hormones over a period of time. And the hormone is progestin, which remember is artificial or synthetic progesterone. And it releases it over into the body over several years, 99% effective. So it stops sperm from fertilizing the egg, makes the mucus of the cervix thicker so that sperm can't get into the uterus. 
changes the endometrium, making it difficult for an egg to implant. And because it releases progesterone, this does something that the copper one doesn't do. Because remember that progesterone inhibits FSH secretion. And without FSH secretion, no egg will mature, no follicle will mature, and so no egg will be released. Okay, so those are IUDs. Okay, now you don't have to know about the morning after pill, but I think this is one of the ones that perhaps you might be interested in knowing about. So I included it, but with blue font, so you know you don't have to, to learn it. Okay. So this is a pill which is taken after other contraceptive methods have failed or no contraceptive has been used. One of the brand names is referred to as Plan B, which I think is really cute. Okay. Oh, sorry, this should also be in blue. Contains high levels of one or both of the hormones in the normal contraceptive pill. Can prevent a release of an ovum from the ovaries if a female hasn't yet ovulated. So that's one way of preventing um, pregnancy. Or prevents fertilization. Or prevents implantation. Okay. And all of those should be able to prevent pregnancy in um, a problematic situation. What did I do here? Okay. Again, this should be in blue. Two doses taken 12 hours apart, taken within... 72 hours of intercourse. Side effects apparently quite serious, nausea and headaches, and obviously doesn't protect against sexually transmitted infections. And apparently it's not recommended to have this, to use this frequently. All right. Now, permanent methods of um, contraception. And remember, this is going on really long because it's got to last you two lessons. Now, the SAGS does not say you've got to know about this, but you live in a modern society and best you know about it. So I'm including these two things as well. So this is often referred to as a woman getting her tubes tied or tubes cut. Scientifically, tubal ligation. So if you have a look at this female here at the top left, this is a fallopian tube. Okay, so what they do is they make a little cut in the um, wall here, and they make a little cut here, and they work with a laparoscope normally. So it's minor surgery, although it does require a general anesthetic and requires a female to stay in hospital for a day. And so what they do is they um, take the little... Um, through the second cut, they pull out the fallopian tube a little bit, and then they make a little cut in the fallopian tube, and they tie this end, and they tie that end, or clamp those two ends, or they can do it in a few different ways. They might just bend the fallopian tube and clamp it so that an egg doesn't be done. Either way, it just prevents an egg. So if you look at this fallopian tube, look at the bottom right, diagram. This fallopian tube has been treated, but this one hasn't been treated yet. It will obviously also have to be treated or else um, pregnancy could occur. So what has happened is the tube has been cut and the two ends have been cauterized. In other words, burnt to make sure that they're closed. And what this means is that a female will still secrete hormones, she'll still ovulate, Little egg cell will move along, 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 but it can't get over that little gap there. Sperm cell can't get over the little gap in the other direction. So, in theory, she can't fall pregnant. Okay. All right. So, how does it work? I'll just explain to you. So, a laparoscope is an instrument used to see into the body. A little incision made in the belly button. Gas is infused into the abdomen to expand um, the abdomen and separate the organs. And the laparoscope is inserted. That's just so that there's a little camera through which they can see what they're doing. So this little view in the photograph down here shows there's the top of the uterus. 
and here's one fallopian tube and there's the other fallopian tube and there's the ovary and there's the ovary. I hope this is what it is. I'm not a gynae obstetrician su uh, su uh, surgeon. I think that's what it is. Okay. And what they've done here is they've done the little clamp method. So see how they've folded the fallopian tube and they've put a little clamp around it. Folded the fallopian tube, put a little clamp around it. Okay. The fallopian tube is then near my not too cut. It's cut, sealed, banded, clamped, or tied shut. Okay. Prevents an ovum from passing down the fallopian tube and therefore prevents fertilization. Perfect use less than one, typical use less than one. Advantages, no need to worry about birth control, foreplay is not interrupted, sexual pleasure is not decreased. Disadvantages, if there's a change of mind about having a child, really reversible, very difficult to reverse. Post-sterilization menstrual periods may be heavier. And this is quite the scariest thing. No few than fewer than 20 deaths per year in the United States. But in fact, these are not to do with the actual surgery thing, but more about the risks of the procedure, such as anesthesia complications. But also that there's an increased risk of an ectopic pregnancy happening. Because if you look back at this thing here, okay. If the sperm does manage to get across, an egg is huge. It's not going to be able to get across a, a little, um, maybe a tiny little space that was left by mistake. And so it's going to implant here and it's going to cause an ectopic pregnancy. So there is an increased risk of an ectopic pregnancy. Okay, male tubes being cut and tied. It's called a vasectomy because it is um, tubal ligation of the vas deferens, hence vasectomy. So it's a tiny cut made in each side of the scrotum um, and what happens is they pull the vas deferens through this, the um, little cut and then they do the same kind of thing as they do to the female's fallopian tube. They take, cut a little piece out of the vas deferens and they close the two ends of the vas deferens. And while um, that prevents the sperm from passing all the way along the vas deferens. Male can still ejaculate because remember, um, semen is made of sperm but also with the liquids from the seminal vesicles and the prostate gland and the carpus glands. And those are still going to happen. They're still going to pass out as an ejaculate. However, there won't be sperm in the ejaculate. Okay. So here is a picture showing you that. There's the vas deferens. And they're going to um, do a tubal ligation of that. They're going to cut it and cauterize the other. Each end. Perfect use 0.02 to 0.1. Typical use 0.02 to 0.2. Not 100 percent sure of the difference here. The male is meant to go for testing every so often to prevent, to ensure, sorry, to test that there is no sperm in the semen. But it is possible for sometimes. Um, a glitch to happen. Advantages, no need to worry about birth control, sex is not interrupted um, for putting on a condom or something like that, sexual pleasure is not decreased, ejaculation still occurs. This is quite interesting because look at this, this is looking at a scrotum and here it's actually possible to see through the skin of the scrotum um, in a male without um, making a cut or anything, it's possible to see the vas deferens. Okay, disadvantages. If there's a change of mind, it's rarely reversible, and it doesn't protect against sexually transmitted infections. Okay, this is um, quite
quite an interesting article, a new male contraceptive. Maybe I need to copy this link as well um, to that site, but um, to the, the Word document that I'm busy putting on um, Google Classroom for you. So that you can look at that as well if you want. Okay. And that's the end of contraception. Please take note.